First story. OP and her husband resolve their resentment. My husband allowed my mother-in-law to crash the anniversary vacation I paid for. This happened a few months ago, but the issue is not resolved, and I need advice on what to do about it now. We have two kids, four and three years old, and have been together for eight years. We both work, and our lives have been filled with the typical stress of working full-time jobs while managing two little ones. My husband is good about doing his share of chores and is a great father to our kids, but he has been complaining about how our SX lives have become dull and boring. For our sixth anniversary, I thought I'd surprise him with a vacation. I saved up slowly for the better part of the year to rent a mountainside vacation home for four nights. It was gorgeous and isolated and had amenities like a jacuzzi, pool, outdoor showers, and a lot of other things that would help fulfill some of the fantasies my husband has. I spend a lot on expensive wine and drinks that we both would love. I made arrangements for sitters for my kids and then told him about the trip so he could plan time off from work and travel. We got there. And on the first night, just as we were getting into some hot SX, my in-laws showed up. My mill came with my sill and bill, as well as my teenage sill. She said that since we had a big place with so many rooms, there was a place for everyone. I was shocked, and I couldn't even say anything. My husband was shocked too, but he helped my mill pick up a room and set up her stuff there. I was so upset that I took my glass of wine and spent an hour crying in the bathtub, while my husband stayed with his family. I woke up early the next morning to find that they had finished off most of the very expensive alcohol stash I had bought for this day. I went on a long hike, and when I got back early in the afternoon, everybody was still asleep. My husband was up, and he apologized to me and suggested we have a quickie before we went down to make breakfast for everyone. Which just made me angry, so he went on his own to cook, and I packed up all of my stuff, got in our car, and left. I had left him behind with his stuff. He called me many times but I ignored the phone till I finished the three-hour drive to our home and then texted him to let him know where I was. He was upset and wanted to come home right away, but Mill wanted to enjoy the vacation, and since she was his ride, he was stuck there for another two nights and finally came home on the day of our anniversary. I spent that day with my kids and friends and ignored him. My husband was furious with me for abandoning him, and we had multiple fights over this issue. My Sill and Bill sent me a text of apology saying they didn't realize it was our anniversary and Mill led them to believe it was a spontaneous vacation for everyone. My husband also apologized for their coming over, but said that that big a house was too much for us anyway, and we got more bang for our buck since more family members got to use the empty rooms. That hurt my feelings more because it was my hard-earned money that I spent to make his SX fantasies come true. When I said this, he argued back that all he wants to do is be able to F his wife whenever, without me trying to make a big production out of everything. This argument has just killed my attraction to him. I feel like he likes to complain and wish for things, but doesn't actually want to make the effort to make them happen, if it's in any way inconvenient. He wants me to make his life easy, but he doesn't prioritize my feelings. That may be unfair of me to think so, because he does so much for our family. But my view has become discolored by this event. He wants us both to apologize to each other and put this behind us. But I am unable to let it go. I do want to fix this though, and I need help figuring out how to approach it. Update. This is an update, an event. I got some good advice in my last post, and some people pointed out how leaving him behind could have upset my husband. So when I had our discussion with him again, I started by acknowledging that my leaving like that put him in a difficult place. I explained to him why it hurt my feelings that he'd let his family take over the vacation that I had planned and arranged for our anniversary. He explained that when my in-laws showed up, he was embarrassed of me and for me. Before we left on our trip, I sent him the booking details. He called Mill to inform her we'd be out of town for a few days, and she asked for details, and he forwarded her our reservation information. Mill looks at it and says, this is such a big house. How many people are going to be there? She couldn't believe I'd get this place for just the two of us, and she said that was just like me being so wasteful. When they showed up, my husband said he welcomed them in, so this wouldn't become another reason for them to make fun of me. He claims he was trying to protect me. If I had a good time with them and cooked for them, They'd like me better. I didn't know this, but apparently I am a running joke in his family. In his opinion, the jokes are not without basis because he thinks I do spend too much. When we were newly married, he got an opportunity for a big contract at work. The prospective clients were very rich folks that he had to wine, dine and present to, and he was pretty nervous about that. I thought I'd help him by organizing his wardrobe for the meetings. I researched men's fashion, bought a few nice things and thrifted a few expensive brands commissioned a tailor for alterations, and redid a chunk of his professional wardrobe. 
His firm got the contract, and he got a huge bonus. He showered me with gifts, and thanked me for making him look so nice and boosting his confidence. At that time, I was still trying to get in my Mill's good graces, so I showed off my work to her. Mill laughed at me, saying that some girls don't outgrow the doll dressing phase, and I was treating my husband like my Ken doll. Mill tells the story with her spin to their family, and it becomes a joke that I play dress up with my husband. Husband has forgotten how much he'd liked what I did, but remembers his mom's version that I went on a shopping spree. One time, my husband got the opportunity to chair an important celebratory dinner for his firm's clients. On his behalf, I put together personalized gifts for more than a dozen guests. I pulled this off while pregnant and handling a baby, so I did all my shopping online. We were both super busy, and the recycling had piled up. Mill took a picture of boxes from department stores and used it in stories about my shopping addiction. Again my husband doesn't remember the work I did, but he brings up that picture to tell me that I do spend too much. He would critique me, saying that I needed more stamina in the bedroom, so I started pullates. He brought up the fact that I used to be more flexible, so I took up yoga. I ended up exacerbating my back problems from my two pregnancies and saw a physical therapist who recommended strength training. Not wanting to risk hurting myself again, I hired a personal trainer. That is another joke to them that I am a flighty, extravagant person flitting from hobby to hobby. My husband now says if I wanted to get fit, I should have joined a sport, but I throw money at personal trainers. He had never brought up issues with money before. We don't have debt other than mortgages, and he never discussed having a more aggressive savings plan. We both make good money in our careers, but he has developed the view that I am a spendthrift and shopaholic without giving credence to my reasoning. I know he loves his mother, but finds her immature, so he manages her. He is putting me in similar view frames and thinks he is indulging and managing me. There is a lack of respect for my ability to do things with good reason and a very condescending attitude towards me. After our lengthy arguments, when he couldn't build a valid case for why my spending is to be criticized, he brought up again why I'd rent such a big place for our vacation. I spelled it out that the point wasn't the size of the house, but that it was on private land, away from public hiking trails, and had a large heated pool and a jacuzzi. For years, he's been harping about wanting outdoor SX. Every time we are on a hike, he wants to do something outdoors. Anytime we are at a pool, he talks about his pool SX fantasy. But I am a very private person the very opposite of an exhibitionist, and that's something I would never be comfortable with. So I thought making that happen for him in a very secluded setting would be a nice gift. It turns out he was never into outdoor SX. He'd say that just to make me uncomfortable. He claims he was merely flirting to get a rise out of me. But I think it was his way of making me feel like I was lacking, to keep me on my toes. He would bring up his desires for different SX acts, and I wanted to make him happy so much. So we did everything that could be done in the privacy of a bedroom. Then he figured out what my absolute limit was and what he could complain about. No wonder he never got the point of my gift, because that wasn't something he wanted. My not being able to do something was more valuable to him. I loved this guy so much and worked so hard for him and our family. And in the meantime, he was trying to manage me and play me. All those feelings of love have turned to dust. I know what I want to do now, but I am not sure what the right moves are. I've started therapy, and I need to think long and hard about what would be best for my kids. I think he's a great father to them, but then I used to think he was an awesome husband. Update. I am mostly writing this down to note what has happened since my last post. I don't have a question, so I'm not posting it to the raw subreddit. I have spent the past month focused on myself and my therapy. I did talk to two different divorce lawyers, and I have a good idea of what to expect if I were to pursue divorce. About a week after my last update, I talked to my husband about separating our finances. He was shocked and unhappy that I was taking these steps. I reminded him that how I spent money has become a big issue for him, so this ought to make him happy. It didn't. I have moved my paychecks and savings into a new account at a different bank. I offered to him that we split the house payments and bills 50-50. Though he makes a lot more than me, I do make more than enough. He said he disagrees with separating finances, and he's not going to make a move on that. He isn't taking me out of what are now his accounts. Since I am the one who usually makes the bill payments, he wants me to continue handling that. He still feels that I am blowing up a minor issue. I admitted to him that I have talked to divorce attorneys to see what my options are, and that shook him up. He was pretty angry with me and very hurt, and that did make me feel bad. He wants us to go to marriage counseling, and I want that too. The situation with my mill isn't getting any better. I didn't give a background on that in the last few posts I made, 
but Mill has become a bigger issue since Phil passed away two years ago. She was always difficult and didn't like me from the start, but things have become much worse since she lost her husband. We have a spare guest room, and she'd frequently come and stay the night if she ever got into any minor argument with Phil. She has keys to our house and would just show up and sleep in the guest room as if it were her room in our house. These overnight stays have become more frequent since Phil passed. She mostly spends time with my older sister, has moved next to her, and practically lives with her. But when she gets upset there, she'll come sleep at our place. Now, along with separating finances, I had decided to move out of the master bedroom into the guest room. My husband is not happy about it because he doesn't want me to leave. Mel is pissed that I have taken over what she thinks is her room. She wants me in the kids' room instead. Since this is my house too, that is not happening. She has had many tantrums about me living in her room. My husband has asked her to knock it off and told her to give us space while we deal with our issues. He's asked her not to come to our house unless invited, and that brought on a new storm. She came by a couple days ago, while my husband was at work, and told me she was looking forward to my leaving. She told me about the women she's lining up as potential dates for my husband as soon as he starts dating, and how they are so much better than me. She mentioned two of her family friend's single daughters, Amy and Beth fake names, who've always had a crush on my husband, according to her. I know these women. They are nice. I've nothing against them. And I could only roll my eyes at her trying to make me jealous. I told her Amy is very pretty, but her husband is an arse man, so she should go with Beth. And I got such a kick out of the shocked look on her face. Later, when my husband came home, he wanted to know why his mom was telling everyone that I had admitted to being a lesbian. I could hardly breathe. I was laughing so hard. I told him what his mom was saying, and he was pretty pissed. He called and yelled at her, and has banned her from our house. So at least I have that going for me. Final update. Husband, and I have come to an agreement about our future. And I am writing this down for you awesome people who have commented and helped me. We went through marriage counseling and individual therapy for both. A lot of issues with regards to how we communicate were brought up. We had been drifting apart for the past two years, and a lot of it was due to Phil passing away and Mill, who had completely relied on him, clinging on to my husband. Then there were issues with work and the stress of managing two very young kids. While we addressed many issues in counseling, the two main were Mill's interference and our actual life. Regarding Mill, my husband has been dealing with a lot of guilt and frustration. He was close to Phil and devoted to him, but disliked his mom. After his dad's passing, he felt like he had to take on his responsibilities, something that Mill guilted him into, and one of the major responsibilities is managing Mill. And Mill's whole personality lately has become fixated on me. It's non-stop in all the ways that I am wrong, and she's smart enough to be both subtle and overt about it with everyone. She's been relentless, and I have no idea what she's got against me that she go so far and work so hard to put me down. I suppose my husband has been continuously exposed to it so much that what she says has become reality to him. Regarding our SX life, my husband was both flabbergasted and upset that I am now seeing his criticisms as abuse. He explained that he's always been very happy with our sexual lives. Early on in our relationship, he found that if he ever said something like, hey, let's try this, I'd sit and analyze our fun times, and he found that a major turn on. I am an analytical person by nature and it's practically my job to evaluate and write reports and recommendations. It became like a kink for him to watch me have a detailed discussion with him post-SX. He did not realize how much effort I was putting into this, because, to him, it was just a fun thing we did. None of this made me happy with him, and the realizations from counseling made me feel that I wouldn't be happy in this marriage. We were living as roommates in the same house, and I had stopped doing a lot of stuff I used to do for him, both at home and with regard to his work travel and work social engagements. For his part, he did acknowledge that he had been unfair to me, and he had become so used to me doing everything that he had been taking it all for granted. Then he proposed to me that we start all over again, stay married, but start dating each other again, and rebuild our relationship from the ground up. He managed his work situation so that he could elect to relocate to a new place, about eight hours away from where we live, and we restarted everything together without family influence. I agreed to that, but I was skeptical about whether he'd move and leave Mill behind. When she found out about the possible relocation, she blew up and tried hard to get her husband to change his mind and stay close to her. Even Sil came to talk to me to convince him to stay, because otherwise Mill was losing her mind, and it had become a much bigger challenge for her. We did move though, and my husband has kept his word, and things have been pretty nice with him for the past couple weeks. Since I work remotely, moving wasn't a problem with my job. 
I am going to stay out of his career and focus on mine instead. Other than my own full-time job, and being a parent who does most of the work and manages the house, I was also doing stuff like his damn PA, and I am so over that. My husband has been very supportive of everything, and is making more of an effort to be the one who plans things with the kids and dates me. Ida. Recent update from OP in the comments. I have spent a lot of time evaluating what went wrong with him and why. For a very long time, he's been an amazing partner and loving husband. He's been going through a lot of difficult issues since his father's death two years ago. Our problems started after that. He had a very close relationship with his father, and his sudden death shook him up. I admired my Phil. We were close, but I don't like my Mill for obvious reasons. While they are very different people, Phil and Mill loved each other a lot, and Phil spoiled and indulged his wife. My husband didn't have a good relationship with his mother, but we both could see that his death devastated her, and my husband tried hard to be her support and strength. He felt that he owed it to his dad to keep his mom happy after his passing. Phil was financially successful in his life, and his wife, who was a psalm, led a rich lifestyle. After his death, in taking care of his affairs, his husband realized things weren't as good as they looked, and that a lot of his investments had gone negative. Not that Phil did anything bad, but it is the nature of things. Now my husband has to downgrade his mother's lifestyle, and she hates it. My Mel is pretty immature, refuses to understand change, and drowns my husband in guilt. That was the major source of the money criticism from her. His days pretty much became long hours at work, coddling his mom, and carving out time for kids. Dealing with his father's estate has been his second full-time job for over two years. With all this mess, his deciding to move away from his mother and distance himself from his family is a huge effort, and I have to give him credit for that. Being his mother's emotional crutch for the past years unfortunately meant that her views of me, a person she resents, colored his views too. He has apologized for that, and he is making overt efforts with me to fix that and show me he appreciates me. As hard as he was working, he prioritized spending time with kids every day. While he didn't like it, Mill took up whatever sliver of free time he could have. It was something or the other with her on a daily basis. This meant that we both let our relationship take a backseat. I encouraged him to go take care of these things while I managed the rest in the background. It had become apparent that the only interaction we were having was frequent SX. He's always been a very giving lover in bed, and that made me do more for him. And since I knew that our SX life was the only fun time he was having in all the stress, I catered to him. He'd say a bunch of great, sweet things to me, and his one random remark here and there would be what I'd obsess over. As things got kinkier between us, I believe that he didn't notice how it'd negatively affect me. I do think his remorse and apology are sincere in this area, and his actions show that. He is a very successful and good-looking guy with a charming personality. I think it'd be easier for him to quit our relationship and start over with someone new, like his mother wants. But he's doing the work to fix the problems between us, and that is what shows me that he loves me. We have had a great relationship before, and I think it warrants seeing what things look like after we come out of the tragedy and difficulty he's faced. Second story. OP discovers that her sister put her niece up for adoption after she had her son. My sister had a second child, and we were all thrilled for her. She lives a few states over, and we haven't seen her since last year. She had one child two years ago with her boyfriend, and the other one was born last month. Yesterday, we had a family Zoom meeting to see the baby and to say hi to my other nibbling. We get on, and family starts to load in. Everyone is basically there, thrilled to see the baby. We get to meet her new baby boy. After a bit, I asked to see my niece as well. My sister got quiet and very quietly said she didn't have her. My aunt questioned this, and I was also confused. After a few minutes, my sister said that in the beginning of January, she put her daughter up for a closed adoption because she couldn't care for two kids. Everyone lost it. The whole Zoom was a mess. We didn't know. We never got to say goodbye. She didn't have to do this because any one of us would have taken my niece. F. I could have taken her. I have had multiple miscarriages and fertility issues, and although I am currently pregnant, I am stable, own a home, and have the resources to take a toddler as well as have my baby. Important. My sister has always said she wanted to be a boy mom. I lost it. I called my sister a narcissistic C. I asked her when she'd get bored of the new baby and get rid of that one too. I asked her how the hell she could do this without reaching out to family. I know my sister, and I know deep down she just didn't want a daughter. She was depressed when she found out she was having a girl, but thrilled for this entire recent pregnancy. I called her a monster for making children she didn't want to care for like they were a novelty. I said some other things too. At this point, 
My grandmother is a complete mess, and she says her chest hurts, so I stop. My aunt, who is with my grandmother, goes to help her and turns off the camera. My grandmother ended up having a panic attack that they thought was a heart attack at first. I am so glad she is okay. My sister has since cut off all contact with the entire family. My father is pissed at me for blowing up. I was the only one who did and says that I pushed her away. He said he could have tried to convince her to reverse it. But my verbal lashing completely ruined any chance of getting my niece back. I don't think he understands what a close adoption means. Also, adoption takes a minute. So for her to have it completed by January makes me feel like this process was in place for a minute. I don't think there's any chance of seeing my niece again after the mother and father both signed her to be adopted. He's mad at me because now he lost his granddaughter and is afraid he'll never know his grandson. My dad's thinks I'm an arse for freaking out and nearly giving my grandmother a heart attack. I'm feeling guilty that my grandmother had such an extreme reaction, but I feel that's more because she lost her great-granddaughter. Edit to update. I've contacted local CPS for my sister's area, local courts, and I have a lawyer looking into it for me starting tomorrow, as I just obtained him. Thank you for the helpful comments pointing out the issues with this. I especially want to thank those in social work who reached out to me privately. I didn't realize how many options I had to fight this or to see if it was legit. I'll update when I find out more from the lawyer. Lots of people are commenting that this is fake. I really wish it was. This has been a nightmare. Thank you again to those with helpful suggestions and feedback. Final update. I am pursuing legal custody, and due to this, I will not be providing any more updates. My lawyer recommended this. The kids come first. I can say a few things. 1. They found her. The adoption process started a year ago in silence, as a private rehoming. It was explained to me that we could fight it as they skip steps in the process. 2. My sister told them she had no family, and the family she does have is abusive. There was abuse on our mother's side, but they are long dead now. 3. There is already an open investigation into my sister's son, because of the way she surrendered custody of her daughter. 4. I'm going to temporarily move into an apartment in that area, so I will be close by in case CPS takes custody of my nephew. It was explained that this was the only way I could actively fight for custody by being available and close. Thanks to Ulitz Bananimus 93. It turns out there may be some kind of update to this mess. She made the following post. Update. FTM. My mill just informed us. She has a full-blown nursery for our baby. And I'm unsure how to react to it. I'm unsure how to react to this new information. I am six months pregnant. My first after multiple losses. My mill just informed my husband that she wouldn't be getting anything for us for the baby shower because she's setting up her own nursery. She's using his old crib, which my husband originally thought we would get. I'm fine with not getting his old crib. I'd rather buy a new one. We may be getting custody of my sister's children as well, and Mill made it clear they wouldn't be welcome, but she had room for my future child. She sent pictures, and her nursery is almost complete, while we didn't start ours. Honestly, it's gorgeous. We just bought a house, and we are saving for the possibility of taking my sister's children. We aren't going all out on a nursery. We are being frugal and mindful with it. Meanwhile, she has clearly spent thousands of dollars already. It's just so odd that she's doing a full-blown nursery. I'm a bit confused as to why she's doing this. She doesn't talk to me much, so she doesn't know I plan on exclusively breastfeeding for a bit and attachment bonding. Frankly, I don't think my child would be spending the nights until after six months. I'm unsure how to react to this. OP is also stated in the comments. Assuming your sister's kids might be in your custody, they'd be raised as, or nearly as, siblings, correct? Imagine how grandma wants one, but the other ones can't come over. Plus, you are going to be attaching to your own low via breastfeeding and all that. She can't breastfeed for you, nor are there plans to enable her. If you do choose to put your low on formula, that's not necessarily bad. I just wouldn't tell her. Blended families are always complicated, and her cutting out these other kids shows she's not up for blended families. Which is the way that yours is. Yes, chances are we will be getting full-time custody. I'm not okay with how she's been treating the expansion of our family. She's a first-time grandmother as well, and she's already rejecting the other two kids we will have. I don't want them to grow up thinking they are less than the youngest child simply because of who was born. I want them to feel equally loved and respected. I'm going to bring that up with my husband as a major concern. Thank you for watching the video. If you are interested in listening to these kinds of stories, we've got more in store for you. Simply subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, and share it with your friends.